dear. Looks like our filter's tired, Kitty. Filtering isn't easy, you know. Even our kidneys can get worn out. Really? What happens then? The humans need a little artificial help. Let me show you by answering how dialysis works. Zoom in! Every day, your two bean-shaped organs called kidneys quietly pull off one of the most amazing jobs in your body. They clean your blood. They remove waste like urea, balance, electrolytes such as sodium and potassium and regulate fluid levels, blood pressure and even red blood cell production. The purified blood then returns to circulation while the waste is excreted from the body as urine. But sometimes, due to conditions such as diabetes, long-term high blood pressure, severe infections or certain genetic disorders, the kidneys may lose their ability to function properly. This loss of function is known as kidney failure or renal failure. When this happens, toxins, fluids and salts begin to build up in the body leading to fatigue, nausea, swelling and further increases in blood pressure. If left untreated, these imbalances can damage the heart, lungs and other vital organs. That's where dialysis comes in, an artificial way to take over the kidney's cleansing job of removing waste and extra fluid from the blood. But then, how does it work? Well, there are two main types of dialysis. Hemodialysis and peritoneal dialysis. Each using a different method, but based on the same scientific principles of diffusion and osmosis. The movement of particles and water across a semi-permeable membrane. In hemodialysis, blood is cleansed outside the body using a machine called a dialyzer, often referred to as an artificial kidney. To prepare for treatment, a small surgical procedure creates a vascular access such as an arteriovenous AV fistula, a direct connection between an artery and a vein or a graft which is a soft plastic tube connecting the two. During each dialysis session, two needles are inserted into this access point. Blood flows out of the body through one needle and travels through tiny hollow fibers inside the dialyzer. As it moves along, waste molecules like urea and excess potassium pass through the fiber walls into a special cleansing fluid called dialysate, while essential components remain in the bloodstream. The cleaned blood then returns to the body through the second needle and into the veins. This process usually takes about four hours and is performed three times a week. Peritoneal dialysis, on the other hand, turns the body into its own filter. A soft tube called a catheter is surgically placed into the patient's abdomen. The peritoneum, the thin membrane lining the abdominal cavity, acts as the natural semi-permeable filter. Dialysate fluid is infused into the cavity where it absorbs wastes and excess water from the surrounding blood vessels. After several hours, the used fluid now containing toxins is drained into a collection bag. This process, called an exchange, can be done manually several times a day or automatically overnight with the machine. While dialysis can't cure kidney disease, it provides a remarkable bridge, keeping people alive and healthy enough to await a transplant or continue living an active, manageable life. Trivia time! Did you know each kidney is roughly the size of a closed fist 
and weighs just under 0.4 kilograms. Also, each kidney contains approximately 1 million microscopic filtering units called nephrons. Sketching time! Today's sketch of the day goes to Scarlett Harris. Hope you learned something critical today. Until next time, it's me, Dr. Binox, zooming out. Kitty, why on earth did you bring a dialysis machine? To replace the ordinary water filter. Oh, Kitty, never mind.